Welcome to the Pop on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is. Is. There you go. I am the Pope in question. My name is May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 458 of the podcast, and this is some of the shortest podcast notes I have had in a long ass time. Because uh, the monologue won't be the longest in the world. It'll primarily be a discussion. Uh, perhaps, I'm just going to talk about uh, my uh, last weekend where I performed at Pride. And this week's movie sucks ass. This is true. And and is the absolute worst Rocky. There are so many crimes that this film has committed. A and I must say that the worst crime is the song sucks. Oh, yeah. They put their entire uh, like money on, oh, we've got the new Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. We've got the new uh, Gonna Fly now. It's called Go For It. So we're going to have people say that line throughout the movie. During the big fight, his son will be saying, go for it. It'll be in all the ads. Go for it. But the song sucks. That is a horrible crime for a Rocky movie. And it pisses me off. But that's that's a different story. Bunny! Yes. Hi! Hi! So I yet, but I'm working on it. Nice. Uh, I don't remember if I I was going to take an edible, and I don't remember. I was going to take a, but I don't remember if I took one or not, so I'm not sure. We'll find out in about an hour. Uh, so I performed last week yes, you did. in front of hundreds of people, and I want to talk about it during half. I was originally going to talk about it here in the monologue, but I like the routine that we've set up with our monologue where we talk a little bit in the beginning, banter about, about, you know, what's coming up with, with our uh, podcast, with our episodes. And uh, then we pick a news story to discuss. And I have a good one that I think might lead to a nice discussion. Okay. Uh, I'm just glad we got a Julian Sands movie in this, in this, Summer of Yo. A Julian Sands movie? Yes. I was feeling who's, very... Huh? Who's Julian Sands? Julian Sands, who's in Boxing Helena. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes. That's right. I'm just really happy that when they hired a black person to do a bad Don King impression, that they didn't get... Uh, uh, Keith David. Yeah. Because Keith David is, is an amazing actor and being hired to do a bad Don King impression is beneath the man. Yes. So I'm happy. You would not believe who choreographed the fight at the end of Rocky Five. I'm going to save it for the end, but it's all I want to talk about. What is this? Who choreographed the street fight at the end of Rocky oh. Five? It is all I want to talk about. Well, well, I, I always go with either Paula Abdul or or Tony Basil, you know, <laughs> or or that or that Mexican guy who did Newsies. He also Tony Ortega. He also choreographed uh, Michael Jackson's final performance that never happened because he died. Yeah. He's a famous choreographer as well. You knew that Cats, the movie, was in trouble when the, the trailers advertised from the director who brought you Les Miserables and the choreographer of Hamilton. That's like a new film from the sound editor of Pearl Harbor. Okay, yeah. something's up. Yeah. When you start getting to that level of advertising something. So, Pink. Okay. The singer. You know Pink, right? Bunny? I know of her. Okay. 
She never like calls well, or anything. The 42 year old singer recently performed well, a big doesn't. concert I'm at London's Hyde you? Park. She, she, and well, throughout the concert, me, so not I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is a British thing or not. Okay. Completely out of left field. I recently watched a, I've been thinking a lot about British people lately. I, Follow a British theme park YouTube channel called Review Time. Okay. And they did a really nice little like 11 minute video about how Tokyo Disney has an Indiana Jones ride that is completely different from all the other Indiana Jones rides. And while describing the plot of the Indiana Jones ride, the announcer said that, however, during the excavation, Indy discovered booby traps and skeletal remains. Okay. Skeletal. I'm wondering, has this guy just never seen the word skeletal before, or is that how they all pronounce skeletal in English? That is interesting. Aluminium. Yeah, they put they it pull that aluminium. Skeletal crap. remains. Who the fuck? I've never heard that before. Who says that? Nobody. Hi, Ranger Kate. So, so I've been thinking about British people lately. So, Pink, the singer, performed at London's Hyde Park, and throughout the concert, people are giving her gifts while she's on stage, including bouquets of flowers, teddy bears, fan paintings. And a giant wheel of cheese. There you go. Now you can drive home. I am so confused. Who gives, who thinks, oh, I'm going to see Pink perform. Better get my giant wheel of cheese. How do you get to that? In well, your head. I'm going to bring a giant wheel of cheese to give to Pink. Well, that is so yeah, random. I, I would, I've I got tickets think... to go see Neil Diamond perform this weekend. Better get my Jenga set. Well, like... I would think you would want it to be something random because you would want Pink to remember it. Okay. You know, well, so like uh, some... flowers or something. And as we all know, women are fascinated if you give them a piece of cheese. Yes. Yes, very much so, Bunny. So, uh... Pink gets a giant wheel of cheese on stage. This isn't news. It should be. You should see her face on stage holding a giant wheel of cheese that someone just handed her. It's a very bizarre face, but not as bizarre as the other face she made. Would you qualify next? as fascinated? I would say so. I would say yeah. that she was fascinated. The look on her but face. Yeah. Uh -huh. her, yeah, she was pretty fascinated. But here's the big thing. Okay, what happened next became big news. A fan threw a bag of her mother's ashes at the singer. Yes, I heard of this. Who paused, picked up said bag of cremated remains and asked the fan if indeed the bag was filled with ashes. Ever the professional, however, uh, Pink said, I don't know how I feel about that and then proceeded to stash the ashes, which is very difficult to say. Stash the ashes. Stash the ashes. It sounds, like a, it sounds like a 2004 rock band. Stash the ashes. And, performing and with Coheed and Cambria. See, see uh, unfortunately, it's pink. It's it's pink and not like ZZ Top where you could stash the ashes in the mustache. Yeah. What, Maxwell? Say that. It's out almost saying the A word. Yeah, yeah. Stash the ashes. Stash the ashes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so she stashed the ashes behind a speaker and continued the song. That's professionalism. Yes. Right there. The pink is a professional. How so, far away from the ashes was the cheese, though? I do not know. Ashy cheese. Ashy cheese. 
It sounds like something that they would eat in Finland or like in, like right before they burn the guy and the bear in the pyramid at Midsommar, they have the ritual where they eat the ashy cheese. Yes. So, buddy, what are your thoughts on this vitally important news segment thus far? Uh, well, there seems to have been a rash of things being thrown on stages with mm-hmm. a lot of performers. But, like, look, you're getting how many millions for this performance? Learn to fucking duck. I'm sorry. That's a good quit, point. Quit your whining. This is a hell of a payday. If somebody pelts you with their dead mother's ashes, hey, that comes with the territory. I performed at Pride Fest. Not only did no one get me cheese, no one threw ashes at me, but I would like to think that if someone threw a bag of ashes at me while I was on stage, I would have, because I have the reflexes of a cheetah, of a trans cheetah. So if someone threw me ashes, I'd just smack them right back and say, I don't think so. Denied like volleyball. Bam! So herein lies the discussion, Bunny. Question. Uh, well, first a statement. Apparently, we can just throw ashes at celebrities now, which is I'm a counting this big as a positive. Deal. So, so with this in mind, funny, what celebrity would you like to have your ashes thrown at after your death, taking into account the fact? That some British mum will no doubt be haunting Pink for the foreseeable future. Uh. Funny. Who you pelting? Who you haunting? Who? Okay. Oh, the... see, you're taking it from so many different a- angles now. Now, who am I haunting? <sighs> yeah. Celebrity. Celebrity. I'm going I'm Ben told... Stiller. Ever since, ever since Natasha and I is, got married, I told her, like, hey, if I die before you, uh, you can't remarry because I'm haunting the shit out of you. Yeah. So, like, not anyone personally. I'm talking about celebrities. Who are who you being? Who are you pelting with your remains? And who are you haunting? Those are two different questions because I would like my ashes to be thrown at tim curry but here's the thing if if i have my ashes thrown at tim curry and tim curry dies does that mean we're now ghost buddies because i don't want to hang out with tim curry as a ghost you know yeah that sounds creepy i would want my ashes to pelt tim curry just out of i don't know respect for the man and all he has done. I, 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 I think for who I would like to be to, to be pelted at still has to remain Selma Hayek. All right, all right. But who right. I would She's... like to haunt, I'm going Ben Stiller. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. You know who I was thinking? Because I, I thought of all these people who I would want to haunt, but then I thought, oh... But if I'm haunting them, that means I'm sticking with them for a long time, and there are just some people who I don't want to be tethered to. Yeah. So so I was like, okay, who... So then I was thinking, okay, what celebrity would, would I be comfortable being tethered to? And that's when I came up with my final answer. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks? I bet being tethered to Tom Hanks or Bill Murray would probably be fine. There's motorcycles you know, outside. There's a motorcycle outside? No, a lot of motorcycles going yeah. down the street. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. So, uh, yeah, just something fun to think about. You know, yeah. what celebrity are you pelting? Uh, I was also going to talk about something else, but I'm saving it for next week's half. Bunny, we are recording this on July 2nd, Sunday, July 2nd. Yesterday was July 1st, which in the world of sports is known as Bobby Bonilla Day. 
Do you know what Bobby Bonilla Day is? No. Okay, great. I'm glad that you don't. Don't look it up. Don't Google it. Don't bing it. Don't ask Jeeves it. That's hap for next week. And I find this shit fascinating. Okay. It is an incredible story of something that happens every July 1st. And I guess I just didn't know about it because I've just never been a sports person. But I'm trying to open myself up to new things and, and, and things that I have shut myself off out of. And so I, I have learned about July 1st being Bobby Bonilla Day. And uh, I, I find the whole thing fascinating. I, I found myself liking a country singer. Really? Yeah. That may be going yeah. too far. Yeah, that's really surprising. Uh, Luke Combs, he's really popular right now. He has a song called Cold Is You that I really like. He also recently did a cover of Tracy Chapman's song Fast Car. Yeah. And I have some problems about a white man taking a black woman's song. However, <coughs> um, next week, the song should become the number one country song in America, which means Tracy Chapman will be the first black woman to have written a top, a number one country hit in America. Cool. That's kind of vaguely historic. And it's like, oh, wow. OK, there you go. Good. I. I kind of like that. So that's it for uh, the monologue this week. I am excited to get to HAP. It's going to be a short one. I just want to talk about my performance at Pride. So cut on the monologue. And Bunny, play my HAP <laughs> intro.